Some nights that's all you can do, Chiefs Kingdom, is you just got to go for it. The Chiefs are trying to do that with Legereus Sneed right now. Just waiting on somebody to say, okay, I'll pay him. We're going to talk about Legereus Sneed and answer all of your questions tonight here live on RGR Football. I'm having a couple of issues here, so sorry for the delayed start. But welcome into the second week of free agency. Obviously, uh, a lot has gone on, a lot has to go on, and we are going to get to the bottom of it. But nice to see you guys. This is Dan Harms, our man on the film room. I'm Ryan Tracy. Uh, I might be choppy, but Dan will take over if that's the case, Dan. Uh, it, it, usually right now, this week, we're like, okay, Chiefs aren't going to get anything done. We're just going to go back to the film. We're going to dig in on all the draft picks. I feel like we should do that, and as soon as we do, we'll get a Legere's need answer. That's exactly what's going to happen. And uh, at the end of the day, that's all we can do, right? We, we just got to sit here and twiddle our thumbs. No, we're going to go back to the film and we're going to talk about guys. And so Wednesday, we're going to get back into it with another wide receiver. You guys liked the Marquise Brown film review so much. You guys have done nothing but give rave reviews. And I can't appreciate and tell you how much I love that so much. 10,000 views. We're going right back to the drawing board. And we're going to get Adnai Mitchell out of Texas because I know a lot of you think uh, that he's awesome and want to see what he does. So that's what we're going to do. Fresh set of eyes tonight, go through his tape, get you guys that film room on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. But until, you know, until Ajarius Sneed is, uh, quote, <laughs> traded, quote, untrade, I, I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to talk about it tonight for sure. I love this one, Gary. We're halfway through our four beat. Dig that. Okay. Um, now, you may see me freeze tonight, folks. Uh, you know, life up here in the mountains, stuff happens, but uh, Dan is going to lock it down. Avery might have to stand in and give you the, the difficulties of, uh, you know, how you can get out of your back pedal better, take that T-step, and come downhill and make a tackle. Avery will sort you out on all that stuff. So she's oh, yeah, I'm sure she will. Un under control. Miss Brenda, nice to see you. Mr. Class and Thundarius, Gary, nice to see all of you guys. Uh, Justin's in the house. Tons of our friends and neighbors. Infopocalypse. And I'm just waving just to you, Miss Avery. No big deal. Um, we are going to have a good time. We're going to answer your questions. You guys know how this works. You throw the super chats and your questions in there. We're going to answer them. We're going to go through. We're going to start with the Jerry's because it's at the tip of my of my mind here. We'll let you guys get those questions in. We do see a bunch already. If you want on the show tonight, no matter what, and you absolutely need an answer, throw a super chat in there and you will get it. If you want to support the channel, absolutely. super chats are the easiest way to do it. Or you can buy gear here with uh, the Rogue Nation gear. All that is available at the store or the RGR logo. Uh, we appreciate you. And you guys have been doing great. I hope that you're enjoying uh, the new... Uh, designs the dynasty stuff continues to sell well i hope you guys are still digging that i love the stuff mine has been delayed evidently but that's okay oh fantastic <clears throat> you know that's the way that it goes um we are going to have some fun here because this is the bottom line you're going to hear a hundred things until it's decided i hear people all over the place and you hear carrington who's got one uh and and as i understand i, I trust carrington he doesn't really say much unless he's got a source that he yeah. does Schefter's on the other side of it. I've heard everything and in between from sources around the league that like, I even have people coming to me like, you think they can get it for this? Can they get it for that? I got people in other cities trying to ask me what they should bid. And I'm like, dude, if you know something, I don't know, but I have confirmed through other folks, at least three teams are still making calls. They're still in discussion. Um, back and forth and back and forth. I know teams have made offers. I understand that there has been a second round offer made at least by two teams. Schefter seems to say that that isn't correct. I'm not sure what's going on there, but here's the bottom line. There's two things that are holding up this deal. I think the Chiefs understand what they have in Legereus Sneed, and I think Legereus Sneed knows what he has in the opportunity. He is pushing to make as much money as he possibly can because he ain't going to get another big contract. He is 27 years old. He gets a four-year deal. He will not improve upon that i don't care if he's all pro four times at 31 you will not get paid like that again and here's the thing and we told you about this months ago and months before that when he didn't go to training camp it's about a medical thing you cannot you can play a ball game as he did great down the stretch all the way through, through the super bowl and you can still have issues that limit and lower your ceiling for longevity in this league i think both of those things are happening right now that's where I stand, and I think it's a toss-up of whether it actually gets done or doesn't. I'll tell you who I think is likely coming up later in the show. But, Dan, how do you feel about where it is right now, and do you think that it can still happen? Yeah, I'm I'm going to go ahead and say that Shefty was told by someone to try to put some cold water on this because there's a lot of people 
that have legitimate sources within the Colts organization that say at least talks have been had. Um, multiple sources that um, I don't have them, but I have people that have them. So I've talked to them a little bit and, and say, you know, that these conversations have in fact happened. They're there. So the denial of such seems to be agent speak or team speak trying to get the, the cost down, right? If no one's talking to them, that means, oh, we can offer a fourth rounder. Maybe they'll take that. Um, something like that. So that's what that feels like to me. But at the end of the day, I still think this is live to happen because like you said, there are three teams that we know of that are making calls and they want to get that done. And I also don't think that the chiefs are wanting to pay Legereus Sneed as the highest paid cornerback in the NFL, which is what he wants to be. I don't think that they want to do that, which I understand 27 year old cornerback with knee issues coming off his best season ever. That is the asterisk here, okay? It's the asterisk because you can't assume he is going to get better with some knee problems in any year as cornerback play is so volatile to begin with. So yeah. we have Chris Jones who played on his first contract, got better into a second contract, and then bet on himself and still was fantastic in the Super Bowl this year in the playoffs. And we were like, okay, fine, go ahead. Here's your money. The Chiefs aren't going to do that with luxurious knee. They're just not. So – tag fine you play one year on the tag and then the chiefs maybe offer him another year older say look we have a couple of days here before the free agency period next year here's your contract offer you don't like it we'll see you off hopefully you get what you want but the risk is also you get hurt your play comes down that's the risk here that he's taking so yeah. the chiefs know that he knows that I would be willing to bet he does not play on the tag, that he'll be that's, somewhere else. That's my hope, is he shouldn't. That's probably, I mean, yeah. not that not that it's not workable, but that's the worst-case scenario for everybody. Because for then sure. he's out on a limb for injury. The, the Chiefs don't have any longevity. It makes zero sense to hold yourself out. If, if his agent is giving feedback, hey, we, we ain't going to pay you 20 mil. We might give you 16. Chiefs, I think, are willing to pay him 12 or 14 and can probably get away with that. If he were to sit out another year, he's only costing himself money. I guarantee that. Even if he has another season at the same level, and you're right, it is way, way more volatile at corner than it is a defensive tackle. So it is harder to project a repeat season like that. I just think he's doing himself a disservice if he's getting stubborn. Now, that said, the flip side of that coin is that mm -hmm. – Nothing has to be done yet. There's nothing that says he can't wait this out and see what teams get desperate. The Colts have a serious interest. So do the Washington Commanders, as I understand. They both oh. need guys. So, yeah, right. Uh, Kendall Fuller signed elsewhere uh, this yeah. couple of days ago, right? Like they're, they're losing some assets. There are serious things that need to happen for both those teams in the defensive backfields. They know that they have the draft coming. So it's about how do they get their – there isn't that much of a hurry at this point. So I do think that this could drag on for a while. Now watch, every time I say something like that, especially when I do it on Lockdown Chiefs, folks, it generally happens within the next few hours. So if it does, we'll, we'll give you an extra bonus. I don't know what to, else to do. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, and that's what we should do, right? If something yeah, happens, we'll, we'll do something We'll do something for you guys. Like, that's just yeah. that's what it is. This is the great question. This, Chris, this is exactly what I'm getting at here. Legereus needs value next year is $2 million a year less than it is this year. That's just a general rule when you're over 26 years old. Correct. Second contracts are your peak at 26 generally, and it goes down every year after that. Now, there are the elites that continue through that, and they get third contracts like Chris Jones just did because he didn't peak at 26. He peaked at 29. Tyreek Hill, Chris Jones, Aaron Donald, fewer and farther between. And you notice I didn't name anybody that's a cornerback. No, so interesting. Yeah, it just makes it a lot harder. So I know there's a ton of sneak questions in here, and I highlight a lot of yeah. them. Probably even more in there. So let's we we will circle back to it. But your thoughts, and then we'll we'll filter a little bit and get on to other topics. Yeah, just really quickly, you guys saw what happened with Tr Tredavious White, correct? That is what the Chiefs do not want to happen by giving him a big money deal. That's that, that's it. We we've seen it firsthand. He was an All Pro corner. And he's played five games the last two years. That's that's the problem. That's what's holding this up for on the Chiefs' side. 
and why I don't think he's going to be in Kansas City next year. It just it's too much to stake on cornerback play. And I love the Jarius. I want him in Kansas City too. But we have to face the uh, the, the serious. What happens if it's degenerative, right? And other teams can't know his his medical stuff because they can't have him in house to right. do those medical stuff. So it's all based on what the Chiefs say. And I understand, AJ, that it's not Tredavious White. But the simple fact of the matter is that it happens. Teams have to take it into consideration. They can't just say, oh, it's not going to happen to Legarius just because it happened to somebody else. They have to take it in stride. They can't yeah. just assume it won't. And there are similarities with the conditions. So while, yes, he is his own man, absolutely. Conditions in the NFL, especially if they are what they call degenerative, do not repair themselves. And right. so that's what teams are trying to find out right now is the Chiefs given them enough information. They've probably given them scans, maybe some MRIs from last season or maybe even training camp when they held him out. But they probably ain't given them anything else. This will come down to do we have a compensation agreement in place? That will be the next thing yeah. is if his reps will, will get to a point where they have a contract in place with the next team and then it will come down to we're going to execute this come past a physical. I still think that's the biggest hurdle here. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I hope it's not. But we have plenty of other things that we're going to address here. So let's get into it. If you want on the sure. show tonight, hit the super chat. Uh, I think Des already has one in. We're going to get to that here in just a second. We will answer every single super chat. And we'll try to answer your other questions. You guys know to put question marks at the beginning. Uh, we're going to skip through some of the sneeze stuff here. Uh, if it's resolved... What free agent OT wide receiver or other player would make sense right now? Anybody else you want them to go get if they get that magic 20 million available? I mean, at this point, bring in a couple of guys. You can use that and get two, two guys, and they're both injury concerns. That's the problem, though. Like he, These guys right now that are at the top of the quote-unquote free agent market are there because they have a lot of talent, but they're also hurt quite a few times a year, if not for multiple seasons. So I know there's a lot of want for Makai Becton in Kansas city injury stuff. Not, I mean, his body oh. concerns as well. Like the, the people kind of forgot that he couldn't get his body into the right shape to begin his career. He did eventually do it. Now go on him for doing that, but his body has not been able to adjust to that process. Sometimes when it doesn't, you just can't play at that level ever again. And that's yeah. the problem. So I'm, I'm personally out. Uh, I, I would like to see Mike Williams in Kansas City personally, just for another one year, and then that's where you're that's where you're taking guys like Hollywood Brown and you're taking guys like uh, Mike Williams for a year, and you're drafting behind them. Okay, you don't take these guys and say we can't draft wide receiver now. You say no, we still load up, and so next year when they get their contracts because we win another Super Bowl in Kansas City, here we go. We have the guys who learn from them. They can come right in and play right at, right after they leave. That's what they should do, in my opinion. I call this a plus situation. It's not this <laughs> or, it's this plus, plus this. Plus. Yes. <laughs> Cover all the bases. Um, I, I agree with you. Beckton is not the answer. Uh, if you were frustrated that Donovan Smith wasn't able to put a full season in, Guy Beckton isn't going to be able to either. Uh, I don't think David Bakhtiari is at this point either. I think probably the, the guy that I would take over all of them is just slightly younger, uh, is probably Dillard. Didn't expect him to be a free agent, to tell you the truth. Um, but it's marginal upgrade. I, I still I still believe you could flip a coin and get performance over, over the course of a 20-game season. That's probably on par with Donovan Smith for way more money. So let's not spend that. Agreed. Yeah, I'm with you. And wide receiver, I, I, I don't mind the Mike Williams thing. I'm starting to feel like Mike doesn't want to come to Kansas City because of the past and being a charger. Um, Whatever. Because I know that they, uh, they had – Information um, out on Calvin. Um, I know they at least talked about two other teams. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I mean, Tyler Boyd's 29. Michael Gallup is is available Michael for a Gallup's role-playing done. position. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's not a whole lot there. Michael Thomas, I think, is done as well. Odell Beckham is just as old. I think he'll be a mid-season signing for somebody, right? Allen Robinson. Uh, again, I come back to Hunter Renfro, who's young enough and has been – uh, not put a whole lot of mileage on. He might be able to play a role underneath, but that's just one option. I don't see a lot worth going to get in free agency, Lee. 
I'm with you. It's just tough. If we get an added pick from this neat situation, how do you use your first three rounds? See our first three rounds going. Well, assuming that they're they're going to get a minimum of a third round pick. I don't think they'll trade LeJerry Sneed for a fourth round pick. This is not going to be agree. a Justin Fields situation. No, I agree. Uh -uh. That tells me you have four top 100 picks. I still only see them taking three of them. Interesting. That's a trade up in my opinion. Okay. Maybe it only that's gets fair. you to 23. I don't know. But that's that's what I would see is the best use of that pick. Now that said that's fair. I don't know if you saw my mock last night. I saw my mock last night, and it's a difficult situation. It's very much like last season where FAU was not a first round selection on anybody's board except I don't know. I don't know of any team specifically that did. He was right in the edge in the 30s, right? But they had to take him because they couldn't get out of the pick. They might be in a very similar situation. And that's what I tried to do last night. And if so, I do like the trade down scenario, but just like the Steelers are unwilling to give Deontay Johnson to the Chiefs in any kind of trade, no matter what the compensation, there are teams that just will not trade with this team at all, period, end of story. And that's going to be hard to overcome. Yeah, and uh, what I think that if they stay where they're at with all their picks, which they won't do, it would be me. I double dip a wide receiver, get a tackle, a defense tackle, and an offense tackle. That's what I would do. That's exactly what I would do because this is the draft to double dip at wide receiver. And yes, you can wait if you if you really want to, but the top one hundred talent is better at wide receiver. I'm taking two of them, and I'm just gonna say, <laughs> well, you one of you sit and learn. Why don't you yeah. sit and learn? I don't care who it is, or both of you for come just come out and make me have to choose. Okay, do that. Whoever figures it out first gets to play with the goat. There you go. Let's go. Have at it, fellas. Show me what you got. Um, Jonathan, thank you. Um, what are your thoughts uh, on Hollywood Brown saying he refused more money from other teams because he wanted to play in KC? And if we trade for Snead, do we try and get another free agent wide receiver like Mike? So you're on the same path there. Um, I don't know about the money thing. I think that's kind to say, and it, it makes a uh, warm and fuzzy, but, uh, I don't know anybody that walks away from money. <laughs> in this league, man, this league doesn't <laughs> work that way. This is a very much a, I'm in Kansas city guys. I'm going to make everyone like me. Whoop, whoop. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I love you guys more than everyone else. <laughs> that's right. Des, thank you very much for the support, buddy. Appreciate you. How do Hollywood and, um, worthy differ? Uh, would Worthy be a long-term replacement for him if he doesn't re-sign? It's an interesting question. Um, I have not – you've done the, the film work on both of them. I haven't done film work on either of them. So I'm I'm just going to shut up and tell you from my perspective, I hope that the upside that Worthy is greater than what we've seen from Hollywood in the recent two seasons. But you tell me. Yeah, for sure. The the difference here is that Hollywood has, you know, the Liz Frank injury. That, that was the big thing. He's got foot injuries the last couple of years that they don't typically get a ton better. So what you're hoping for is, you know, this year he's able to play and you know, he does everything well in space. <clears throat> All of that fun stuff. He runs good. He runs good routes. He has good ball tracking. I think Worthy's an elite ball tracker. He's better than Hollywood Brown in that department, in my opinion. I think he's also better after the catch handling physicality. That is something that you're not going to see a ton. I know Andy is another talk about how Hollywood comes in and he he is going to be able to make guys miss. That's not what that's not his game. That is not his game. I pointed that out on the film room. It's not his game. Xavier Worthy can make guys miss in space. He's got better short area quickness and better burst after the catch. Obviously, he's faster. Not by a whole lot, but he is right. faster than Hollywood, especially at this point in his career. So Hollywood is going to be a fantastic three-level winner. For this offense, he gives someone that can win at all three levels. He is not going to be Tyree Kill. He is not going to give you a ton of created. Yeah, he will take advantage of space, which is what mm -hmm. Andy Reid will utilize. And we've seen that. But he is not going to create yak like Rishi Rice, like Travis Kelsey. He's not going to do that. So if those are your impressions, then you should probably go watch my film room on Hollywood Brown right now to really see what he's going to bring to this offense. Mm -hmm. Well, really, what you guys ought to do, go watch back to back the worthy film and That's the Hollywood. Right. That's film. right. We got both. Um, if we got both up yeah. there. Um, because you're exactly right. And from what I've seen of Worthy, and I have seen a couple of live games, um, I have not done games on him yet. Wide receivers will come from me down the line because Dan's doing all the hard work on them. Um, I don't see him as he keeps he's made two comments in the media that I'm aware of. How uh, uh, worthy has 
is that he wants to be used like Tyreek Hill. But I don't see on film the short area quickness and change of direction that he has, or even the deceleration that Tyreek has either. So I, I think that's maybe a stretch as well. You tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I, anyone trying to compare themselves to Tyreek Hill is doing themselves a false, just a, it's just, just a disservice. Because even if you're a good deceleration player and a good short area player, which I think it worthy is, it, it's not, it's not comparable. It's just not. So let's not do it. And, and Xavier, I know, I know you want to think hi that highly of yourself, but that's not what you are. And I'll be the first to tell you. I'll be honest with you guys. I'll tell you what I see. And I'm, I'm telling you, that's not it. You're a really good player. And I think that he's going to be a very good player in this league. But if that's not but that's not the same thing. Like he's still going to be able to do some of that. But the stop on, on a dime and reaccelerate mm -hmm. faster than you can you can think, that's Terry Kill. That's there's nobody else in the league that can do that. So let, let's not compare ourselves to it because it doesn't exist outside of maybe a few players ever to play the game. And, bro, don't set yourself up for failure. You tell these Let's fans you're the next Tyreek Kill, it's going to hurt. I'm just going to tell you. Mr. Mead, nice to see you. appreciate you being back. And he's on Hollywood as well. Do you think Hollywood can raise uh, the entire wide receiver room from his leadership alone? I feel like uh, he will bring KT and Sky Hardman out of their funks. Um, I don't know if Hardman's going to be back. I do feel like he can help Sky because I think they, they have a similar point of view. But I have not ever – been told anything that Hollywood Brown is the leader within the room. No, that's never been heard from anybody. He's not a vocal guy. It's just, just not. It's just not him. So right now, you're looking at Rasheed Rice as being the kind of talker in the wide receiver room. So by default, the Chiefs might need a wide receiver in there that can do some of that because right now you have a lot of soft-spoken guys, and I know wide receivers. They might need someone that can talk to them a little bit, just 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 just, just to bring them up. Wide receivers need a Frank Clark is what they need. They need somebody. To they tell absolutely them, you do. Stop today, get your shit in gear. That's what I need someone to do. That's um, exactly Justin, it. thank you for your question. Ozzy's in a similar there. What do you think the floor, of the ceiling is for the wide receiver room if it consists of Hollywood and Rice Watson, rookie to be determined? I like that, Ozzy. And yeah. um, combo of more Tony Ross. Uh, do they need another free agent signing? I think we both agree that yes. They need a leader, and they need an extreme talent in the draft. I think at least two. <clears throat> I'm with you, and I think that that's what we have to kind of assume. There, maybe Travis can be that for them, but typically we don't hear him talking about how they're he's doing that for them. Like he doesn't talk about that anywhere that I'm aware of. So it's nice to have as a holistic leader because Patrick will do the same. But you have to have those guys within the locker room as well. And honestly. The Chiefs have not had one of them outside of Tyreek Hill. I, I think Tyreek was like the guy that did that, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong about that, too. But if you think to these wide receiver rooms, Juju's kind of soft-spoken. Um, in the media, he's not. But like in the room, it doesn't seem like he's that leadership kind of guy. Maybe he took that on. But Sammy Watkins, no. Um, last year, and the S. No. <laughs> so maybe they just roll with how they do. And, and maybe Rasheed Rice steps into that role. Because I think maybe. Rasheed is an extremely charismatic individual. He might be able to, to take on that role and just go. Because I, I do think that he has that type of, that, that type of, you know, that, that charisma, the ability to do that. I like it. Thank you, Ozzy. Appreciate you. I know you have more questions. We're going to get to you here in just a minute. Um, Megan was pointing out that uh, Hollywood thought the Chiefs were going to draft him. So, obviously, this is another circling back on interest <clears throat> that they had pre-draft. Um, and I had heard that they were interested pre-draft as well. The list, Frank, is it's very scary if you are a, a team drafting a player with a known condition. That is hard to see. Um, let's see. There's. I'm just trying to check and see if we addressed everybody. Yeah. Charlie, I think we got your Sneed comment uh, taken care of. Um, odds, just straight up. What do you think happens, Dan? I think he's going to get traded. I, 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 th I would say I'm I, at this point, I'm like 75% sure that Jerry Sneed doesn't play 2024 in Kansas City. Okay. I'm gonna, just going to be devil's advocate and take the other side because I think it's really 50 50 right about now. So, okay. We'll see. Uh, Charlie, uh, if they trade him, should we sign more free answer? What do you think they'll bring back a Bolton, Creed, and Trey? I mean, th they definitely have to keep space, and that's part of why you have to stagger the contract correctly. 
Um, but I don't think the decision on Legereus has much to do with what happens with those three next season yet. They should have enough space to figure it out. Yeah, I'm with uh, you. Okay. We're going to go through some draft selections here. A lot of questions up top, so forgive us, folks. We're going to go kind of speedy, and I know there's a bunch of Super Chats waiting. I am coming to you guys. I appreciate yes. you, and we'll be with you shortly. <clears throat> uh, DT Boyd from uh, Northern Iowa, sixth or seventh round. I haven't been able to get any Northern Iowa film. I haven't been able to get South Dakota State this year. I definitely haven't gotten New Hampshire. For those of you that are like Lob fans, I haven't been able to find any film on him either. You, you guys, I really do apologize. If you're looking for small school guys, there is a very good chance that we have no film of them. Just, just none. It's getting harder and harder for us to get all 22 on these guys, specifically those ones in the smaller schools or FCS. Yeah. It's, it's, that's damn near impossible. So I apologize, Steve, and I apologize for all of you out there who have questions about, you know, maybe some players that you watch in your region and just because you're there and you see them and stuff like that. We don't have access to it. And the NCAA is just doing a really good job at just continuing to stranglehold college football film. So we're doing the best of what we got. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is a concerted effort by the NCAA and Exos. I'm not letting you off the hook, Exos. You sons of no. To, to not let us have the tools we need in order to do our job. So it, it's a little bit in, infuriating, to tell you the truth. Um, and he did not go to the combine. So I, I don't have measurables on him in terms of what I can tell you. He, he lines up athletically. Um, but I will go back, and I do have him on the slate. Uh, our old friend Jeff Porter, you guys know him from the channel. He is uh, helping me shore up the stats, and we will have some stats on him. So I'll be able to at least give you a production metric, which is always hard at Northern Iowa. You can ask all the left tackles that have come out of there recently who have flopped to the NFL. Uh, it's hard to project at that level, but we will do the job, and we'll give you what we know, Steve. And Gary, thank you. Um, did she show any interest in Missouri uh, and his rake Uh, Not that I've heard specifically, but, man, there wasn't a whole lot of reports about who met who at the Combine this year, so I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't seen anything about that, but it would – I mean – stylistically i think he fits with what the chiefs like he's a physical corner he's 511 he's 183 pounds 32 inch arms so his arms are longer than your typical corners maybe they're a little bit shorter than the chiefs want they probably want like closer to 33 um they like those long players unless you're going to be trent mcduffie then you have you have some wiggle room here <laughs> with guys like trent mcduffie <laughs> but so at least from a, a body type composition in terms of arms that match the, the total body if they would probably prefer six foot maybe a little bit um, longer but physicality wise i think he makes a lot of sense and athletically he's, he's a good athlete i, I just he's probably going to be a top 50 56 50 pick and unless you trade legerious sneed um which again I, I believe they're going to maybe he doesn't fit in there where they want to draft excuse me draft a corner this year yeah it's about available and uh, the ability to do it. Although I do yeah. think, especially if Legereus goes, but maybe even if he doesn't, corner is on the table here in the draft. If it you is, get to absolutely. the point where you don't have a grade left and you're at 95, there will be corners that are worth a 95 pick. I guarantee you. Some of your other positions might not be there. O tackle, D tackle might and be then, long gone. And I'll tell you right now, if they're at 32 and they've traded Legereus need and there isn't a guy in there that they want offensively, Cornerback comes into play real quick because it's yeah. a very good, it's a very good corner class, especially at the top when they get pushed down by all the offensive guys. That is something to think about. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, Des, thank you again. And 13 months for Des being a member. Appreciate you, buddy. Do you think McDuffie gets extended? He's not eligible yet. He's a first round pick, so they can't negotiate a, until I believe the fall of his fourth season. This is going to be his third. So it doesn't happen yet. They will use the fifth-year option, so I don't even think it happens then, to tell you the truth, and then they'll go forward. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting, though, because he and George Karloftis are going to be on fifth-year options at the same time. Going to be a tough The one. difference here is that he's coming off of an all-pro season. Sure. They're, in my opinion, going to extend him next year if he looks anything close to what he has been played. If he, even if he gets better, he's going to get extended after his third year. That's how I feel yeah, about I this. Because like you yeah. said, those fifth-year options, you, you don't want them at the same time. So, okay, We're, we'll give George some more time, but we know we want Trent for the extended period of time. I think that's how this plays out. You save yourself $4 bucks a year for every year that you sign him early. 
I'm just going to tell you. Yes, sir. At <laughs> least. Good God. If he puts back to backs, we're screwed. It's over. Oh, okay. And then uh, I missed one Hollywood here from Steeman. Appreciate you, buddy. And thank you for the support. Uh, same with you, Des. Uh, is Hollywood a bigger diva than Stefan Diggs? Chiefs uh, like to share the rock. Hollywood might need the ball, need the ball all the time. I don't get the feeling from that. No, he he's never been the lead fiddle, to tell you the truth. I mean, this this last two seasons with with Kyler, I don't know that you could even call him that. I think he I think it's a perfect situation for him to have a, a big bodied Rasheed Rice. I'd like to see another one, but to just be that guy that does what he does. This is the perfect situation for him. And he's never been that outspoken guy. Like he's never demanded the football. Um, at least to my knowledge. That's not something that I've heard about him or have seen him tweeting out about. He doesn't cryptic tweet stuff. So like he's just he gets frustrated when he's open and guys like Josh Dobbs don't get to him because he's too busy checking the ball down. Like, again, you guys go back to the film room and watch. There is a ball that he is wide open on a corner out in between a cover cover four uh, and, a, you know, a cover two corner and a cover four corner like a safety. He's wide open. And Josh Dobbs is like, nah, we're going to fill this, check this down. And he's just like, dude, I'm wide open. And that's like Mahomes makes this throw. Mahomes makes oh, this yeah. throw. I point I pointed out specifically because it's maybe a window some of the less experienced quarterbacks want to throw into. That's wide open for a touchdown for Patrick. So it's going to be a little different here for sure. You're absolutely right. And and like that that stupid little wave that I do all the time, Hollywood Brown will never have to do that again. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I mean, he's There's still no around. <laughs> I mean, he might put a hand up, but it's not going to be yeah. like, hey, remember me? <laughs> Hell no. Yeah, Holmes will be like, keep running and shut up. I'm putting this out in front of you. So I I, I totally agree with you. I, I, that's the better the better option. Um, I, I think it's good for Hollywood and it's good for this team. So I think everybody wins right now. Um, Chiefs fan, uh, do you think that uh, Muhammad Kamara might be a great option to turn into a DT uh, since he does line up all over the line? I wouldn't say he could be a full-time DT, but I do think that he has enough power in his game to do a Mike Dana where he can reduce inside on passing downs and attack guards with his quickness because he does have it. Um, he's an underrated pass rusher. He is in my top 10 and rising pretty quickly as I finish up my grades on the edge class. Um, that's where I've been spending a lot of my time lately, folks. So I think you're going to like the way that he comes out. And uh, I will get some film together on Muhammad Kamara. Again, CSU is another one. Even though they should be everywhere, it's been hard to find defensive film on them for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't either. But I do know that uh... – He'd be fun. He'd be a fun player in Kansas City with the way that Spags would be able to use him as a defensive end and moving around all over the formation and just be getting chess pieces for the defensive line is at this point what you want to do with Spags. And that's exactly what this guy is. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about him to say the truth. I think it's gonna be kind of fun. Um, let's see here. Thank you, Chiefs fan. <coughs> Ozzy, uh Chiefs probably the D line was probably the worst group last year after the wide receiver. I don't know about that. I mean, as a group, I would say no because I felt that the rotation was was robust. Was there any one leading guy? No, but they got it done. They still pressured. What were they fourth in pressures in the season? Like I think as so. A team, yeah, they still got it done. But I can see where there's there's no star power there, Ozzy, other than Chris. I get it. Um, with them essentially running it back, do you see them improving or staying the same? Well, I don't know if they're um, running it back though <clears throat> because the draft will be a big feature in that. You know. Yeah, but they also are running it back. <laughs> like, uh, it, it's, I think he's talking about the defensive tackle group outside of Chris Jones. And I fully endorse his his, his reasoning here. And, yes, we did get confirmation of, of that specifically. So, yes, defensive tackle, uh, not including edge. So, yeah, I think that you can feel underwhelmed by what they've done at defensive tackle right now while also hoping that they finally take a defensive tackle this season in the top 100 and kind of hoping putting some of that to rest because they need to um losing losing um colin saunders was a big blow it was he was really good for them and yeah. they should have given they should have given him that contract they should have done it it wasn't that much and their defensive tackle room would have been much much improved last season with him there so hopefully this is them learning the lesson but also they're still bringing back Derek Nottie. I, I figured Wharton would come back, but they have to add someone else to that room from the draft. They need to. They really do. And I lean towards a pass rusher, but 
I don't know. I keep hearing people knocking Devondre Sweat down their boards, and I'm like, dude, if he's available at 64, Hollywood might have been enough to bump him into a selection rather than trying to stay on wide receiver. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you never know. That's just so much man to move. It's Although I will say this, and this goes for the wide receivers as well, the ones that you're going to see Wednesday as well as Worthy, there is something about Texas players. There is a reputation around the league, and there has been for quite a long time that kind of comes and goes about Texas players not being, well, let's be real, being soft. And they get into the league, and they don't produce because they're not ready. And they're not ready to work, and they don't have that work ethic. I would argue that might have been what we saw last year with Coburn. I don't know. I really yeah, can't tell you. But I think there might be a little bit of hesitation there on the Chiefs' part. Um, just because the makeup of that program caters to its players so much that I think that's been the rep for a bit. That's fair. I get it. Running backs aside. Thank you, Ozzy, as always. Great questions. Uh, Derek, nice to see you. My father pointed out the Chiefs don't keep centers that they developed from the past. Do they keep Humphrey or let him go and develop a new stud center? That's a very good point. They let Rod Hudson go. They let Mitch Morse go. I just, I, it would be heartbreaking for me. And I have a hard time seeing it because I don't feel like the level of center play is as good as it was three years ago, in my opinion. Where do you stand? So, 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 <laughs> um, while I understand that they typically don't, there is a little caveat to this because we've seen. Creed Humphrey also play guard in a regular season football game. So if the Chiefs are like, Trey, we love you. You're going to get paid on the open market. Go ahead and you go find that. Hey, Creed, let's talk. Let's talk. You want to get paid a little bit more at guard? We'll, we'll, pull, we'll pay you at guard and draft a center. How do you feel about that? I, I don't think that's going to happen, but I think that it is an avenue worth discussing because he's would also be in in my opinion an all pro guard and he wouldn't have to worry yeah. about snapping the football um so and honestly you guys with all there. the with, with all the complaining <laughs> about the snaps that we've seen that we we've we've heard from him this year this past year maybe a move to guard is better for him i don't know damn it i hate it when you make sense i don't know i'm i I don't want to see Trey go, but that's that's me. I, I'm I'm hoping it's more about what happens with Tooney and his longevity. That maybe they can keep both of them. And like, yeah, said, maybe maybe it is a move to guard. But damn it. Okay, fine. So good question, Derek. One that I hadn't considered, <laughs> but I'm glad you asked it. Um, Hawkeye, uh, just curious. What do you think? Uh, who do you think gave you better LT play, OBJ or Donovan? That's a very good question. Um, I looked it up a second ago. Who do you think gave up more pressures, Dan? I know Orlando Brown gave up more pressures than Donovan Smith did. No, he didn't. Nope. He gave up more sacks. He gave up more QB hits, but it's 53 to 48. Uh, Donovan yeah. gave up more pressures. I, I was going to say OBJ was better tackle, specifically because he was light years better in the run game than Donovan Smith was light yeah. years. And it really wasn't close. So the, and and they were both in my opinion, kind of equal in the past game. And I'm just like, whatever Patrick has to figure it out. So I lean, uh, I was going to lean OBJ anyway. And so, yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I was surprised by that. I had to go verify that. And again, I don't want, I, I want a premium left tackle. If I have to lose LeJerry Steen, you guys know how I feel about LeJerry Steen. If I have to lose him, that pick has to come back to me to get me a left tackle I could be happy with. <laughs> because I don't want to go with either of these guys. I can't do it. I'd never cry on film, but <clears throat> I might have to. I'll do it. Um, <laughs> how does Wani compare to the OT, uh, the OG field in the draft? Uh, would he go in the third round in this draft? I mean, there's the top seven. He might still make it into the second, in my opinion. I don't know. He was a third round pick. Yeah, I don't think oh, Wanya was, was would be a would be a second round pick. Yeah, he was picked in the third. Um, okay. I think that he he might again be selected near the end of the third. 
but it is a better tackle group, but that also means that more are going in, in the first round. So you have to remember that, yes, it's better, but more are going to go early. So maybe he still is in the same range. Um, I, I think he would be a fringe third round pick if he came out in this class. So maybe third round compensatory pick area is what is what I'm thinking. What was he? He was the eighth off the board, right? I think so. I, I think the eighth go in the top 50 picks in this class. I agree. So, yeah. So that's that's the question. Okay. Thank you, Autumn. Appreciate you. Um, so, yeah, well, likely we think he's probably about the same range, but comparatively a lower grade. Brett, uh, if we have to roll with Wanya as a starter, uh, just because there wasn't value there whenever we're picking, are you smashing the panic button or are you okay with it? I can live with it. He's got to make some progress, but I'm drafting somebody no matter what. If, if it happens to be a lower round pick that you try to develop, I can live with it. We've seen pretty terrible pass protection from the left tackle for the last three years in Kansas City. They've got two Super Bowls to show for it. So, okay, maybe they can figure it out, and he's going to give them something in the run game. And again, he's young. He's not the player that he's going to be going forward like OBJ and Donovan Smith were. He's got somewhere to go. Now, we got to see some improvement. We do. Yeah. But I'm not going to panic about it. <laughs> They've had terrible left tackle pass protection for years. Nothing's changed. I, I, at some point, Patrick has to have some time, though. Like, <clears throat> I agree. As he gets older, he's going to lose his ability to get away. I don't know. Oh, making me nervous. Uh, Casey, forever. Thank you for the 10 spot. Appreciate you and your support. You guys have great shows thank and great you. information. Cheers. Um, do you or anyone know what is wrong with Snead's knee because it seems that he couldn't practice last year? Um, they have not been very specific, but it has been, as I understand, something to do with the joint. Um, there was the meniscus, I think it was his second season, that they had yep. like a little, it's so. just a little clip out repair, not a big procedure. But this last one, I was hearing all kinds of crazy rumors, nothing that I could corroborate. So I don't know. But if it's anything related to that, you get cartilage that breaks down, you get some bone on bone kind of things happening, and that will end a career real, real fast. So I think that's the concern. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. No it's, fun. It's scary. No fun. It's scary for everybody, including Legere's. Yeah. Um, this is a good question, Kevin. What are the Chiefs doing at QB2? Dumping Gabbert or at least bringing in others for competition? I'm surprised Gabbert isn't back already. I thought that they would try to get a low-end contract out of the way and be done by now. I'm I'm baffled. I'm interested. Um, I like not having Blaine Gabbard as the backup, not having right. Chad Henney as the backup. I love the, them as people, but no, no. I, I would much rather have somebody that can throw the football down the field. Um, accurately, I should say that, because anyone can line up and throw the ball down the field. So um, I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't. That's a It's a good question, but at the end of the day, it does feel like Andy Reid is going to be like, hey, Blaine, come on back, because yeah. that's just the Andy Reid way. He wants to have a veteran, I feel, that doesn't have to be, obviously, the, the arm of the athlete, but has to be able to understand the mentality of the, the offense. I actually kind of – we're to this tipping point now. Patrick's 27, going to be 28 years old. Up until this point, it's been have a veteran in the room so he can help you with the weekly preparation so that he can scout out for you on film, that you have somebody with the experience level, right? Patrick's getting to the point where he has the experience level. So I don't know if that's as much of a boon anymore. I feel like they're going to take a late quarterback in this draft and try to see if he can be a backup. I think they like Ludicon. I don't think they're ready to push that. I'm just going to skip to the beginning oh, to the end here oh, because Teddy. Teddy's got the best idea there is. And yes, Spencer Rattler at QB2, everybody. Let's go. Bring him oh. into Kansas City. <laughs> I love it, Teddy. I would Thank Sam you Hartman for the 199. Rattler at QB2. Oh, my <laughs> no, God. no. Yes. Sam Hartman's going to be doing his bachelor stuff in, in the next You're couple right. of years. You're right. So I just, he's getting ready. He was getting ready for his his shows with the hair um, at the combine yeah. and the senior ball. He's, he's, he is almost checked out. I, you're probably right. He's going to be a late, <laughs> if not a UDFA. I just like the guy, and I go back, and it's because of our guy Perry that I go back to him. Because when he had talent at wide receiver, I thought that he was able to do more things. It's fun when you can just throw the ball up and those guys will go get it, right? It's fun. Right. That's Jordan right. Travis, too. Jordan Travis is not a good That's quarterback. True. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but, but 
you, you have a very solid point there. <laughs> but <laughs> it wasn't – I don't even know if you could call the guys at Notre Dame wide receivers is my point. Like that's, that's fair. how disparate it was. So it's like fair. I feel like there's a middle ground there. But I, I don't trust Rattler any farther than I can throw him, and I can throw him pretty goddamn far. So – I'm just well, saying. he can throw it pretty far too, so I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks, I'm a little under the weather, and I'm letting things slip that I normally wouldn't say in public. So, cheers. Mm. Um, are the Chiefs having beef with each other now, or the insiders? It seems like it, or at least they're they're bringing different uh, stories to light. I don't know. It's fun. It's fun for Twitter. It's all it is. It's a show. Guys right. don't like to be upstaged on Twitter, and that's what it's become, right? It's like, oh, I got you. No. Oh, I got you. Now I'm going to shut <laughs> this down. I'm going to say this unequivocally, and everyone says, no, I'm going to go the opposite way. That's all it is. Right. It's just, yeah. a, just a big pissing contest, guys. <laughs> I love it, because they know in the end no one's right until they're right. And exactly. that's three years after the draft, usually, so uh jonathan what are your thoughts on Pooney from kansas i like what he brings in uh, and which is versatility on the offensive line what are you guys potential diamonds in the late in the draft that uh, casey can draft um go ahead on Pooney because uh, you know all the same crazes i'm a big fan i, I love dominic Pooney. I, I think that he was already a fringe day two player before he went to the senior bowl and before the combine he solidified himself as a, a third round pick and that's where I've got him on my board. And that's where I will have him. I think he's showcased center to all the way to tackle. Playing all five positions is so unique. And it's something that a lot of players have to learn how to do in the NFL because of need. It, he's already got that. He's already knowing how to do all of it, which is a huge bonus for, a hit, for anything. So I don't want him playing at tackle personally. Um, I know in a pinch he could do it. That's fine. But I think he's going to be... Maybe I think he has the upside of a Pro Bowl guard in the NFL with his footwork, his natural power, and the ability that torque, the core strength, the ability to really kind of move guys with your core. That's that's important, and his recovery ability is good too. So I, I'm a big fan. He's not going to be there and on day three, unfortunately, for the Chiefs, but uh, he's going to make someone pretty happy. And again, he could be a again surprise pick on day two for the chiefs if things they don't plan on bringing back a guy like trey smith that's exactly what i was just gonna say like again if the board clears of the guys that you have on it the chiefs are gonna have 150 maybe 160 guys on their board it's very distinctly possible that the what i'd guess 35 ish prospects on their day two board it's very yep. possible that they could be all be gone by the time they choose at 95. And Pony is probably a high fourth grade is my guess that they might be in, inclined to take at that point. I just don't know if he'll last that long. No, <clears throat> I'm with you. All right, guys, we are going to speed up a little bit here. We've got about, you know, 13-ish minutes and 25 questions Whoa. to go. So let's go ahead and go in. I <clears throat> appreciate that, uh, Jonathan. Ruthless Monk, thank you. What's the difference between Kenny... Uh, Galladay and Keon Coleman and simulators. I fell in love with Keon as a prospect recently. So the big difference is that Keon Coleman's footwork is days, light years, years better than Kenny Galladay's ever was. And he, he can do all of the things that Kenny Galladay could do in terms of go get the football, great body control, hands through contact, but he can do it with better feet and the ability to run routes at a better level in the NFL at some point. Kenny Galladay never got there. Fair enough. Hey, well done. I like it. <laughs> Damn. Uh, 300 people in here in the chat. Thank you for supporting Ryan and Dan. Please hit the like thank button. You. Thank you for being here, Danny. Thank our you, fearless mod. We appreciate you very much. And we couldn't do it without you, Gary. Thank you, buddy. Justin, what kind of tags are there? And what do the differences mean? Also, which one does Sneed have? He's on the franchise tag, meaning he cannot be negotiated with unless the Chiefs allow it. They have allowed him to seek trade. They're, they can only then explore uh, possible contracts. Nobody can sign up to an offer sheet like you can on the transition tag, in which case mm -hmm. they get a sheet and then you get two first round picks for it or a first round pick or whatever the, the compensation is. Um, Sneed is the Chiefs unless they choose to trade him. That's the basic way it comes down. To. Yep. Um, Matt, what are the chances of a draft night trade? What do you think, Dan? I think they're pretty they're pretty good. I think that they're 50-50 right now, uh, I would say. But I would I would lean more towards trade down than trade up. Fair enough. Unless this need thing happens, or do you think that's still a trade down situation? I still think it could be because teams don't want to trade with the Chiefs specifically to go let them go. Maybe a few up. I would say maybe 25. Maybe. Fair. 
Would you resign Kareem Hunt if he got released? I thought he was. He's not a member of any team, from what I understand. He was brought back to the Browns for that year, but he was not given any more than just the rest of the season. So he looks toast. Um, I'm I'm out. Yeah, fair enough. I think I am too, PK. Sorry, buddy. Um, What do you guys think of getting rid of Tony and Watson and using the money to get Reynolds or Chark? Um, Also, is Renfro cooked? I'll let you answer the first one. So, yeah, I like Reynolds as a player, a big-body guy who who can be a reliable player. Again, the, the drops in the NFC Championship game do not paint the picture of what he is. He's a much better player than that. Um, DJ Chark is a vertical outside player. Basically, you're going to replace MVS with that skill set, but he'll catch the football for you. So there there is that. Um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, I, I like Reynolds. I like Reynolds. Yeah, I, I like him as well. Um, and I don't think Renfro is cooked. I don't think he's been terribly well used. Um, that's my position. I, I'm with you. I, it usage. I don't never getting the ball thrown his way. I don't. I don't know what's going on. But there was a rift. It seems like there was a rift between him and the Raiders organization. And now you know he's he's out. So hopefully he can get some get somewhere and be rejuvenated. Yeah, I hope so as well. Um, Joseph, is it possible for the Chiefs to negotiate the tag like Saquon deal last year and lower the tag hit with us not likely to be in earned incentives, um, something like 14 and 7 in bonuses? Yes, that's exactly what it is. They, the whole thing is they have until, what is it, July 15 to sign an extension when they're on the franchise tag or else they play on it. So uh, it buys you a whole ton of time. Um, yeah. But at that point, I still don't think the Chiefs would even give him incentives to get him over $20 million. I just don't no, think I they're agree. willing to spend it. I don't either. I'd, I'd love to see a 10 with incentives to maybe get another six. I could, That'd be I could, nice. I could, I could live with that. Yeah. <laughs> and if I'm him, I'd be like, if that's all I can get, that's all I can get. I'm signing the damn deal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate you. Mike, yeah, nice to see you, buddy. Uh, tonight's or thoughts on ESPN, uh, Dominic Bossworth saying that he doesn't like the uh, Brown signing because Juju Watkins, Gordon MVS weren't successful yeah. signings. Please. I have the floor I, I have thoughts. I have yes. thoughts for this because I saw this question and I got so mad. Dominic Vosworth, Foxworth is a really good really good mind. He has a lot of really intelligent takes. This is not one of them. Because Juju, Juju Smith-Schuster led the Chiefs receivers, nearly had 1000 yards in his one year deal where he was yes, injured, played through it, got himself a contract, worked out for the Chiefs because they didn't have to pay him and they won a Super Bowl. Check. Um Juju, um Sammy Watkins Won a Super Bowl, also was really good number two receiver for them, and they didn't have to pay him outside of the first contract. You know, he did get paid, but he was very productive for the Chiefs when he was on the field. Injuries aside, you can't project injury. So, yes, check. Gordon was a flyer. Didn't work out. Who cares? MVS, fine. There you go. You have one. Only reason it didn't work out is because he didn't get any actual season stats. But you want to know what? He caught a Super Bowl touchdown and helped them win the game, and he was clutch in the AFC Championship game against the Bengals that got them to the Super Bowl. So get out of here. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Micah. I love it when you guys can rile him up because it makes, it makes me have a good time, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Matt, thanks for the Super Chat. Appreciate you. Uh, do you draft a CJ replacement this year or next? I say next because uh, we would still have two years left on the rookie deal when he's done. Thoughts? Um, I think it's about availability and, and your ability to get there. If if I can get Byron Murphy, if I can trade up to 16 and get Byron Murphy, I'm doing that now. End of story. Yeah, me too. Do it now. And you don't even need to replace Chris Jones with him. You just put right. them next to each other. Right? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let, let's have all the pass rushing DTs. That's what I'm here yeah. for. He's also <laughs> a legitimate run stuffer too. He can legitimately right. do it at yeah. one tech. What a plus. What a plus. Uh, Leggett, Corley, or Javon Baker? You've watched them all. Oh, I'm um, Leggett. I would take Leggett and then Cor- uh, and then Baker and then Corley. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I thought you were going to reverse that. <clears throat> Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate the ten spot. Thank you, Brandon. I have I like not that. watched them all. Um, I have seen Corley because I did the Austin Reed film. Um, I haven't watched Baker at all yet, so I really can't compare. But I think I'm with you so far. It's fun. It's it's a fun it's a fun wide receiver group, guys. It's the, the, these guys are so good. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you, Justin. I'm sorry if I miss hit something. That might yeah. Be hopefully me. we I, didn't I'm, do that. Yeah, I'm sure you're behaving as well, buddy. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on KJ Osborne as a cheap vet signing? Thanks. Oh, 
Unfortunately, Ron, he was already signed by, I think, the New England Patriots. So, KJ Osborne, unfortunately, is not available for the Chiefs. Thank you for the five spot, Ron, but uh, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, no joy. And you are right. It was the Patriots. <clears throat> oh, but thank you, Ron. Appreciate you as always, pal. Um, Donnie, Josh Reynolds hasn't, has, still hasn't signed, could we? And yeah, that I think we'd both yeah. be okay with that. Absolutely. Um, be a lot of fun. Not over Williams. I would still put Williams above myself. Yes, for sure. Um, Again, because he's he needs a one year prove it deal. He's not going yeah. somewhere and getting a multi year deal. He's just not. I don't think so either. Yeah. Um. Who there was someone else that came up the other day that I was like, eh, maybe. I'm just scanning here real quick, and I'm wasting time. I'm sorry. Apologies. No, you're fine. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> appreciate you, DC. Thank you very much. Thank you, DC. Thanks, Thanks for being so one much. of the members. If you guys don't know, if you want to hear the real stuff where uh, we talk as though we're talking to each other or we go on rants, that's in the, the memberships. You can get it at the rookie level or above. And you get in the Discord that way. You get all the true, no BS, this is why I really won't touch this dude kind of stuff. Um, and this time of the year, it starts to ramp up pretty good. You have my five best takeaways in terms of free agency is up on NFL 33 right now. Come quick, you're going to have my worst three or five or however many free agent signings that I find. So you might want to get in on that as well. So it's going to be fun. Thank you, DC. And thank you, Breeze. Nice to see you back. Thank you. Uh, Sorry if you talked about this already. I just tuned in after the gym. Have you heard the rumors about OBJ wanting to come to KC? My opinion, no way. Dude had his chance last year. I don't want faux team players. Well... Well, do you, yeah. w- would you be so mad if somebody came to you and offered you $15 million? You'd be like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, that sounds pretty good for a one year deal. So I understand. Um, I understand the animosity as well. Uh, it's, it's, he could have wanted a ring in Kansas City. He could have done it. Um, but he also compliments this wide receiver room very well. He would be the X receiver in Kansas City like he was in Baltimore. And he would allow Hollywood Brown to be whatever he wants to be. He can play on the inside, play on the outside. Rasheed Rice can play on the inside, can play on the outside. He does kind of round it out. So if it's going to be under $10 million, I'm okay with it. But if it's over that, no, you can go get that somewhere else. I, I agree. There's three things happening here. A, he's 31 years old. He'll be 32 before the season ends next year. He's on a clock. That's something yeah. just ticking and ticking loud. It's time to get that. It's time to get that ring, OBJ. That's what right? this is. <laughs> right. He made the mistake and didn't come here last year. So he's got a little regret going. Yeah. I think both those things drive down the price. They should. Here's the thing for the Chiefs. They let the Ravens test drive him. And now you know that he has recovered from the knee. And he can still put out for you. Can he be the OBJ he was? No, I, I don't see that. But I still think he's 85, 90% of what he was. How do you feel? I agree. I, I He yeah. looked good last okay. year. He looked good. I, I, I'm, I'm totally comfortable with him playing a year in Kansas City. Okay. And he's got Oh, that's that right. Swag. He does have a ring. My, my bad. My bad, Brandon. He does have a ring. But still, yeah, right, time to get right, more. Right. It's time yeah, to get true. more. I completely forgot about that one. I, I blocked more it out hardware, better the hardware right? in the Super Bowl. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> him and Aaron Donald, who's already retired. So hey, thank Oof. you, Brandon. Thank you, Will. Um, if we're these there thirty two, is he still a good fit after the Hollywood signing, or can Casey be? Should they be targeting bigger bodies? I'll just say this: I don't think the body type is the issue. I think it's the usage ability that is the issue. That's fair. Um, and again, this would be not a instead of, right? Hollywood Brown's here for a year. It's a one year prove it deal, right? The incentives tell us that. So again, if you're thinking if Hollywood Brown leaves the next year with a better contract elsewhere, okay, now we need that wide receiver. We need, we need another type of player that does that. So you could, if the Chiefs are very interested, what it does, it does appear that they're interested in um Xavier Worthy because of the the meetings and things like that it does he is their type of player it would not this this would not stop them from drafting him at 32 if he's there it wouldn't do that okay um <clears throat> I'll say this I, all that aside I'm just I'm waiting I want Roma Dunza to get busted for smoking a joint or something I need something negative to happen so he falls out of the top 10 
that's what I have to have. That's that's where I'm at that's, these days. You keep you just fall asleep. Eventually it'll happen, Ryan. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Darius, thanks, buddy. Uh, Dan, why do you like worthy over? <clears throat> Saw a great breakdown from Brett Coleman, and he has me sold that AD would be dominant for the Chiefs. Ooh, well, it just so happens I'm going to be breaking down AD Mitchell's tape this week for us all. So you guys will, will kind of understand what I think about him. Again, I'm doing I'm going to start from the scratch with, with AD Mitchell tonight and watch him, fresh eyes, and do it all through. So we'll get there. But really, it's because of what he fits stylistically in Kansas City. The Chiefs and Andy Reid prefer to create space and take advantage of space. And the way that the defenses play teams, uh, the, the Chiefs, with two high safeties and forcing them to play down up. That's what they want them to do. And I like A.D. Mitchell, but his I'm not, without getting too far into it, his 4-3-5 is not real. It's not on his tape. It's not there. So we're talking about a player who is, is a big er, – bigger body not as big as texas was trying to sell everyone and he's a good athlete those are all real things but the reason i have worthy is a better fit is specifically because of the way they would use him in taking advantage of space i agree with you i don't think he runs in breaking routes terribly <clears throat> hard i have done a little bit of texas film um so i don't like that aspect and and from the four or five games that I've seen, the thing that I would say he does the best that fits the Chiefs is tunnel screens. And that's what I said about McColl back then. So I'm, I, I'm not here for that. Uh, I would love to talk with Brett. Uh, Brett has not been on the show with me for quite a long time because he still had less than 50,000 subs the last time we talked. So uh, it's, it's a different world. But I don't see domination from him at all. I no. see a soft big 12. That's what we'll I see. see his like I said, be. We'll see today. I'm going to go into it. Fresh eyes. We'll, we'll, we'll do what we got. We'll see what, we'll see what it is. And I will, and I will shut up and defer to you because I'm just going off of what I see when I'm doing other players, because wide receivers just drive me insane. So it is what it is. Uh, Brian, thank you for the five spot. Appreciate you. If Snead were a free agent on any other team, how would you react if Casey signed him to 19 million for one year? And we could do so many things with that. I would be disappointed because I would tell you this, you might get that one year out of him. You ain't getting three. I'd be worried about his medicals. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what would happen. We'd be all, all wondering, why wasn't he practicing? What's up with the knee? Is he going to be able to play longer at 27 years old? We'd all be asking the same things. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, FLDB. Nice to see you, buddy. Almost three years. Coming up on three years, bro. Woo! You guys, Frankie's our, our resident Discord maven that's awesome he helps us out he's in here all the time he's been a member forever appreciate you buddy you were one of the good ones and i i just hope that we keep giving you the content you guys love because of people like fldb man you're a beast justin um probably save this for the end of the stream okay hold on i'll do something else first <laughs> then we'll come back to that uh which cbs would you take at 32 i tell you what I like Terry and Arnold. I know he tested slow. I don't really care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, let's let's be honest. Um, I'm just looking at the rankings here. It's not a great class, but I do like Arnold. Everyone wants to put Quinton Mitchell in the first round. He's got tenacity. He's got athleticism. I can see it. I'm worried about the jump in competition. I have to be honest. At 32, I don't have to worry about that. Dan exactly. is, is obviously absolutely sold on him. I am. I love this guy. <laughs> I love I'm him 60, so much. At 32, specifically, though? Yes. If he's at 32, okay. I would probably take him over a lot of the players that I would previously have taken, especially if they don't have Sneed, because okay. he was playing in a defense that was not his skill set. He was forced to play cover three. He is a press gotcha. man corner. And he showed it at the Senior Bowl and lit people up. He was fantastic, he and I, I'm 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 taking that and I'm plopping him down in what was Legereus Sneed's role. And I'm saying, go do that, go do hey. that. <laughs> Guess what you get to do? Guess what you get yeah. to do? Um, so Tarion Quinnen by a, by a hair for me, absolutely for Dan. Um, yeah. Sanistral, uh, am I saying that right, Dan? Uh, Sanistral. I love him. I do, but you're 
putting him in Trent McDuffie's role. That's what you would do because yeah. he's a slot guy. Yep, absolutely. And and I, I like Trent outside too. I could see it being the same progression as it was for Legereus, where you start as a nickel and you move outside. I'm fine with that. I like Kamari Laster myself. Um, he doesn't turn as much, as quickly as you would like, um, but he's physical enough. He's not twitchy as much as I would want. Mm -hmm. But if nobody else is available, I see him as a better value than some of the second or third tier edges, to tell you the truth. And that would be the next position that I would go to if OT and wide receiver are empty. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, um, I mean, I like Kyrie Jackson. I like I love Max Melton for his athleticism, but they're both fringe second round players to me. Yeah. Um, Abrams Drain, I like early day three. I, I'm a fan of Cam Hart. I think he's got a lot of upside. But he's a day three guy. Um, don't think he's a day three guy myself. But you, you don't? No, I think he's firmly top 50. Cam Hart. Yeah, the Notre Dame cornerback. Yeah, I think he's going to yeah, go inside same, the top 50. Same Cam. Okay, wow. I did not expect us to be so drastically different. Um. All right, yeah. I see him like as, as 90s, uh, plus or minus. So, you know, bottom of the third is what I was thinking. But okay. Cool. I Maybe think he's going to go in the top of 50. Okay. I, I should, I, I I should clarify. Film, I think so. he's going top 50. I, I, I would say he's a day two pick because that gives me some wiggle room because <laughs> there's <laughs> a lot hard. of athletic ability. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Des. That was a great question. Um, and we'll have more for you, obviously, as we go through the, the next eight weeks before we, we get up to that yeah. time. Teddy, Rattler QB2. We got you there before. I just wanted to put it up there one more time so Dan can't say that I'm hiding it. I'm not. <laughs> um, Nick, nice to see you, buddy. Uh, cool, as you say, is the way Patrick Mahomes plays. Doesn't require lead tackle play, just great inside play. <laughs> yeah. I like it, Nick. I like it, Nick. I like you it. Need to, bro, you need to put that to a baseline. Let's, let's, let's get that out in the world, buddy. Come on. <laughs> JJ fourth, Rattler fifth, says Kev. I have them over Bo and Penix. The latter seem like finished products where the others have more upside. I do agree they have more upside, uh, JJ in particular, but I have both Bo and Penix above both those guys because I see JJ as a 60% possibility when the volume has to go up to 35 passes a game. Can he sustain what he is now? I'm not sure of that. That's my that's really my only question about him. He's got yeah, all the tools. I understand that. And I'm I'm with you, Kev. I'm I'm also in the exact same boat because I'm again I'm not a Bo or Penix fan, but in specific systems, uh, I think that both are gonna be good NFL players. And that's I think Penix is gonna get drafted by this by the Seahawks, and then he's gonna be good. Like he's just gonna be fine for them for the next like you know, 10 years after uh Gino, because I think that yeah. that's like legitimately what his ceiling is is being Gino Smith in the NFL. Um and really? okay. I think that's what he what he could be because of the way Gino just throws a ton of FU balls into, into windows. He just does not care. I think that's True. Penix's best trajectory Attribute. to getting to success, just being that. Just do that. Um nope. so yeah, I, I'm with you, Kev. I have JJ at four and Rattler at five myself, but I'm much higher on Rattler than Ryan is, as we've established. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure Rattler's going to make my top 10 when it's all said and done. Uh, right now, he's eighth. And I, I've i gone through three games on everybody at this point. Even Keaton Slovis, which, good God, that hurt. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I'm sorry. You, like, I had, I had to make myself do that. But I will get to five <laughs> on each of them before the whole process is over, folks. Um, but yeah, the, still yet to come. But yeah, JJ JJ's really intriguing. Like, I want to like the kid. Very just, polarizing. I come away from it just like, damn, there wasn't enough for me to know. You know what I mean? Like, I lose confidence in myself because there isn't enough to see. Drives That's me fair. nuts. Uh, thoughts on that McConkie's fit in the offense. Thank you, Teddy. Appreciate you. And thank you, Kevin, if I didn't say that before. Thank you, Teddy. He's a perfect fit. It, it, he's a he's a drop him and play him. He, he could play day one. Good. He's going to get open. He's going to do everything right. He's going to be in the same spot. He's going to do, he's going to catch the football. He's not going to drop it. And he's going to be exactly where Patrick Mahomes expects, expects him to be. And he's going to do exactly what Patrick Mahomes says. So yeah, he's a, he's a one-to-one -one 
beautiful fit because he's going to be the get open guy next to the Rasheed Rice. Go make all the plays. It's it's a match made. I I love the fit. I'm just struggling to say it's worth 32. I get it. I, I'm on board with it because again, yeah. I, because you're you're not picking again until later. But maybe they trade up. But I, I, again, I think Lad's going to the Panthers if the Chiefs don't take him at 32. That's my opinion. I think Lad yeah, goes to may, the Panthers. You may be absolutely right, which is a nice fit that you snuck in there about Penix, by the way. Uh, Penix's offensive coordinator from Washington is now the Seahawks offensive coordinator. So. You like that? <laughs> For those of you who weren't picking up what he was putting down, I just wanted to point it out there. Shrewdly done, my friend. Um, I, I like Lad, especially if they trade back 10 or 15 picks, I like Lad as a target right then. He yeah. could slip that far. Somebody might – Panthers might take him. You're absolutely right. But it is a scenario worth looking at. And we're going to wrap it up. Everybody, please, like, sub, hit the bell. Say thank you to Gary for being our mod. Cole's been in here as well. Nice to see all the regulars. We're going to end with Justin's because he asked me to put it last. So, hey, uh, save this for the end. Uh, but you guys' thoughts on the third Starship launch on 314. So cool. Um, nobody tracks Elon as good as you. I, I'm serious, Justin. <laughs> when you're ready to be a full-time content maker – I will build RGR Elon or RGRX. And you can <laughs> run it. I will have nothing to do with it. I'll turn you loose. That's fantastic. Your... And that's exactly the hashtag that he used. And I love that. Um, I just, I'm just glad that I didn't hear anything negative about it. I, I was, did they get delayed? I can't remember, Justin. But do you follow any of it, Dan? Not a lick. It doesn't come up on my feed. I have that man muted, and I just don't care about anything he does. I don't like his politics at all, but I like his toys. In fact, Justin, I will say thank you to you and to Elon for this. Right now, when my connection was crap, I am on Starlink. You're welcome. So, Elon, I appreciate you for that. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have plenty more. There's plenty of other questions coming. We are only 10 minutes over, so well done, Dan, for getting yeah, me up and going. Fine. If you didn't get your question answered tonight, please hang in there. We're trying to cover all the topics. We can't necessarily yeah. see everybody's actual uh, quote. But I had a great talk with Rick Mueller, uh, Randy Mueller, sorry, not Rick Spielman. Rick Spielman's coming oh, next. Oh, yeah, Rick Spielman. Um, Rick Spielman. Um, so, you know, I get confused with the XGMs. I'm sorry. But Randy Mueller spent some time with me, and I really appreciate it. Um, you're going to have some of it on here. You're going to have some of it on the NFL 33. Um, some great insight into not just how you go about building, but what you build. And I'm trying to get that out this week. Film of Donnie Mitchell on – did I say that right? I, I'm gonna figure out. I'm gonna figure out exactly how it's pronounced, and then I'm gonna put it on Wednesday because I, I thought it was Ad and I. So we're gonna we're gonna find out for Dang. sure. Okay. Well, I ain't even close then. But he's gonna be on Wednesday. <laughs> then we will have the rest of the content as always, uh, and we'll keep things rolling. I'm gonna try to do the mocks on Sunday nights. Uh, I'll do some live and some pre-record like I had to last weekend. We have another tournament this weekend, so it'll be pre this time as well. But hey, we're gonna get there. Plenty of it here, and I hope you guys are ready. The uh, The Athletic Matrix is coming along. It's about 70% done for the first initial outing. It's not going to be graphic heavy. I'm going to make it super simple. Um, you're going to see some, some samples from Dan and I coming in the next couple of days, and then we'll yep. get that. And then the pro days roll on. As we get through the pro day circuit, then I'll have all the data, and you'll get the official release, and then that rolls right into the draft guide. So go over to rogueapc.com and get your stuff set up today. Uh, if you... By the first edition, the combine only, you're going to get the other one free. So just keep on rolling. So lots going there. Um, any th parting thoughts, Dan, that I missed? No, I think we just got to, you know, we have to understand at this point, you guys are doing a fantastic job of supporting us. And we love all the questions. We can't get to all of them. And I, I, I wish we could. I really do. But keep asking. Keep asking. We will get to them. And if you, if you really, if you feel like we've missed you a few times, reach out individually. On, on Twitter, you can DM me, you can at me, you can do all those things, you know, at In Harm's Way 19. Uh, I'll, I'll answer questions. I get time for as many as possible. So there's a couple people on there that will just randomly message me and ask questions. Just, just It's okay. You're not bothering me. I'll get to them when I do. So we're always trying to answer questions. And if we can't get a good answer for you, we will, we will do the best we can at researching and having answers for you after that or the following week or the week after. So don't we really don't skip, try to skip over anybody. We, we don't want to do that. And as much as we can, we'll answer questions to, to the best to, to our knowledge and ability. Um, 
kudos mike burton i miss you too buddy um we'll connect after this draft cycle <laughs> and gary um yes we will be having live streaming during the draft um i'm not traveling this year there we go things going on that i'm going to stay home so uh but we will have streams we'll have our insight um are you going to be in michigan no i'm not going to be in michigan okay. okay just checking just checking i thought you might you know no we'll us. be probably making another trip to rgr west or is it south for you oh, i like that for me it's east this is west you're coming here it's a, I might so have to me, blow up the whole studio. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get that far out, but <clears throat> your brother is is west from me, so <laughs> okay, right, 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 right. Okay, yeah, you're definitely going to get there, Callie. Nice to see you, buddy. Glad you made it in before the end. Sorry, we're just about to sign off. So everybody, enjoy your Monday night. Get ready for tomorrow. Maybe we'll have some LJ news. I will definitely jump on one of us for sure instantly. Yes. when we find out about LJ, so hold tight. We'll see what comes of it. And in the meantime, we are running down the draft for you. We're going to have more content coming. Check out NFL33.com as well as RGR uh, and RogueAPC.com. You're on RGR. What the hell am I talking about? That's it. We're done. We're out. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm out. Dan, thank you for everything. As yeah. Always. We're just going to get out of here so we stop yeah. tripling over yeah, our words. I'm, That's pretty much what it comes down to. At the yeah, end I need of a the drink. Day. All right. We'll catch you all later. <laughs> <laughs>